here with the Varsity 845 Football Show. We start this week at New Paltz, which is coming off a 34-7 win at Marlboro last week. Physical play has been the key for the Huguenots this season, as linebackers Brian Kenny and Kenny Verney can attest. They have been racking up the tackles thanks in large part to the four defensive linemen, Christian Berta, Devin Dixon, Guy Suma, and Phil Dorman playing in front of them. We caught up with Kenny and Verney to ask about a New Paltz starting defense that has allowed just 32 points, as well as Saturday's big game at Red Hook. Um, yeah, I think that has a very big impact on what we've done this year. Um, we've definitely been very physical, and we really have stopped the run a lot, and we've been playing very well on defense. Yeah, I think uh, we're very physical on defense, especially our defensive line, and they get through most of the offensive lines. A lot of people like can't block. Most of our guys like Guy. Yeah, and we just stopped the run very well. And that helps our secondary guys stop the pass because then they have to only worry about the pass instead of coming up for the run when we stop it. It's a lot. It's making our job a lot easier and it allows us to get our tackles and just do our thing. Our coaches just gave us the best game plan that we could have done and we executed it very well. Yeah, we game plan very well and we, yeah, like you said, we executed. We did everything that we needed to do and we played very well on both sides of the ball. We've always thought that we were a very talented team. I mean, some people never, or they underestimated us. So it's nice to get a win like that against a rivalry school like Marlboro. So yeah, it's, a, it's a big division win for us. Uh, now we just have to beat Red Hook, get into the number one so we can get a bye. We basically just got to stop the run. I mean, and they don't, they have a few talented players, but nothing that we can't handle. Defensive line, if they do what they've been doing all season, it's going to make our job easier to get the tackles, and then it'll make the secondary easier to stop their passes. I think since our offense line is so big and they move people, we're able to run the ball, and when we're starting to run the ball and the linebackers start crashing in, Jimmy can pull it out and then throw it to our good wide receivers like Hunter, Joe, and Kuma. Yeah, we're definitely a threat on the run game and the pass game, and it's helped us a lot on offense, and it shows that we're very versatile in what we do. It's well, we do the holes knowing that we're winning, actually. Last season, it didn't go that well. We lost a couple of games. We lost a lot of games, but this year, it's definitely, like, the whole, like, attitude of everyone just changed because we were actually winning. All of our peers are kind of supporting us a lot, like, we saw at the Marlboro game, we basically had a student section, and even though it was a away game, it was it was nice to just have everyone out there, and everyone appreciates what we're doing out on the field. So Next up is Chester senior quarterback and defensive back Jack Rose. The Hamiltonians opened the season with back-to-back -back losses against Red Hook and Spackenkill, but have rallied for four straight wins, largely due to Rose's veteran leadership. A four-year varsity player, Rose has grown from a freshman call-up to a starting defender to a key player on both sides of the ball. Chester hosts Bronxville for homecoming on Friday night and wraps up the regular season with a big game at Burt Catholic next week. Yeah, like we said at camp, we do have a younger team, but uh, coach did a very good job taking the new kids, showing them what to do, and they did a very good job learning it, learning everything, how we do it, and learning it fast. So I think they uh, stepped up and replaced the old players very well. Um, you got you to teach them what Chester football is all about. We have a big tradition over here, and um, we like to we like to show the younger kids what it's all about. And as my job and the other captains, we got to show them. So, uh, first of all, uh, our line has stepped it up a lot. They've been doing a great job, especially this past weekend. They did a, they played a phenomenal game. My running backs, my wide receivers, they're catching balls. My running backs are running hard. Everyone's doing their job, and I think that's why we're doing well right now. Uh, no, not at all. We're taking this game just as seriously as any other game. It's a big game for us. It's our homecoming. It's our senior night for us seniors. So we're going to definitely take this game seriously. we got to do it to prepare for Burke. So it's not going to be taken lightly. We've got to work hard this week and practice and next week. But we're definitely focusing on Bronxville this week. We know we have Burke next week, but that's, not, that's next week. We still have to focus on this week before we can get to that. I know that Bronxville has a very good quarterback. They have a good wide receiver. Um, so they're definitely going to be a good game. We're going to have to practice hard this week if we want to perform on Friday. Let's take a look at some of the other games to watch around Section 9 this weekend. Washingtonville plays at Monroe Woodbury on Friday night. The 6-0 Wizards play one final regular season game before a first round bye and a spot in the Section 9 Class AA semifinals in two weeks. Monroe Woodbury is looking to bounce back after last week's loss at Newburgh 
and we'll try to build some momentum heading into the playoffs. Highland is at Marlboro on Friday night at 7 o'clock. This is one of Section 9's best rivalries on the basketball court and on the baseball diamond, but it has been lopsided on the gridiron in recent years. How will the Dukes respond after a 34-7 loss to New Paltz last week? Burt Catholic is at Millbrook on Friday night at 7 o'clock. The Eagles are hoping to keep pace with Chester in the Class C standings with a win here. That would set up a division championship game when Chester visits Burke Catholic on October 22nd. On Saturday afternoon at 1.30, Goshen plays at Warwick. It's the 104th edition of this rivalry, the state's second oldest. Warwick has won 11 straight games in the series and will look to retain the Spirit Trophy with a Class AA quarterfinal playoff game coming up next week. Finally, Spack and Kill plays at Liberty on Saturday at 1.30. The race for the Class B Division II title comes down to this game. Spack and Kill can clinch and earn a first-round playoff bye with a win. James I. O'Neill could also play into a three-way tie if it beats Ellenville on Friday night and Liberty prevails over Spack and Kill. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Check out more high school sports coverage on varsity845.com.